Um, Jessica, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. We miss you this morning. I'm so thankful. Um, prayer really works. I'm telling you, M's feeling better tonight. And uh, I'm telling you, it's been, I mean, they've been living with it 24-7. But I'm just telling you, as a grandparent, man, when you see them babies hurting, they can't move their neck, uh, just <clears throat> frightening. And uh, we put it out, I think, yesterday, last night, for people to pray. And uh, we prayed this morning. And um, I guess during church, she was clapping her hands and carrying on. They sent us a video of it. And so I just give God praise that baby's feeling better. I'm just telling you, man, prayer works. There's power in prayer. Amen. And what a deep move of the Spirit while they go in that prayer room. Wow. Just wonderful. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. And if you have it, say praise the Lord. Katie, good to see you tonight. We're praying for you. Good surgery tomorrow, all right? Just pop that thing out and no issues, okay? Amen. I'm serious. I just speak that in the name of Jesus. I, I love the dentist. I hate going. I mean, if I could mellow me in, I would. But I got to go with my teeth. You know what I'm saying? I mean, amen. But anyway, amen. Praise God. She'll be in good hands tomorrow. Perfect peace in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. If you have it, say praise the Lord. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have a God, and you are not your own. Verse 20. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And everyone say amen. Jesus, anoint me. Help me do a good job tonight. Give us ears to receive this word tonight. In Jesus' name I pray and every believer say amen. You may be seated here. <clears throat> the Bible teaches us that we have a body, spirit, and soul. And tonight I want to deal with the spirit aspect of us. And I want you to look at verse 20 again, if you don't mind, if you still got your Bible open. It says, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, that's the physical body, and in your spirit, which are God's. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says this, for which cause we faint not, though the outward man may perish, that's the physical man, Yet the inward man, everybody say the spirit man, mm -hmm, is renewed day by day. Now here's something that you, you got to get this, is the Bible teaches you that you have a physical body and that you have a spirit. Every person has a spirit. Now, whenever the scripture talks about, in fact, it's in Ephesians where it says that he quickened us together with Christ. In other words, he calls us to come alive again. When you got saved, it wasn't your physical man that came to life. It was your spirit. Your spirit man came alive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so whenever we got saved, he quickened our spirit. Now, this is really important, and, and this is where I'm going tonight. Is that when you get saved, you have got to get used to operating in two realms. You have to get used to operating. Of course, you've done this forever, your physical realm. But you also got to get used to operating in the realm of the spirit. Now, why would he quicken our spirit if he didn't want us operating in the spirit? He wants you to become aware of that inward being that you are. Because here's the deal. When we have a funeral, we're going to bury your carcass somewhere. But you're going to live forever and ever. Because you're a spirit being. Are you hearing me? Now, you've got to get used to operating in the realm of the Spirit. Now, let me read this for you. He said, and this is 1 Corinthians 3, 1. And I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So, he talks about that we need to grow, because when we get born again, we are as infants spiritually. And, 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 and I, want, I want you to think about this for a moment. Is that our spirit man is perfect right now. Our spirit man is perfect. Just like the spirit of God is, that's how our spirit man is. Now, our physical man, still under construction. Can I get a witness? 
So when he talks about us being as infants, and I really believe this, it is your ability to connect to that aspect of who you are. A lot of people struggle with connecting to the spirit that is in them. And they only operate in the physical realm. And so, and what happens, and I was thinking about this in prayer meeting uh, tonight, and, and, and I wasn't listening, but you know how whenever we're in a group praying, uh, you, you hear different people praying. And I heard Sister Joanne praying, and she was praying in the Spirit. And I thought that the, the longer you're in this, the more accustomed we should be to operating in the Spirit. Now, you that had just come in, you got to learn how to do that. you got to learn how to connect and allow your spirit man to do the praying, to do the worshiping. Because if not, you're just going to be stuck in this physical realm to all of the elements that are out here. But the Bible said that we shall receive joy when we receive the, the joy is in the Holy Ghost. The peace is in the Holy Ghost. Now look at, look, look. Everybody in this world is searching for peace. The guy out on the bar stool tonight, the guy that's shooting up, whatever. Everybody wants some kind of peace in their life. But you and I have the opportunity to tune in and connect to the spirit of peace, the prince of peace. Don't have to take a drug. Don't have to take a pill. Don't have to go somewhere. And we can just get out of the physical into the realm of the spirit. Now, I know this may sound crazy to you tonight. Just stay with me for a moment. But the Bible talks about three categories of people. It talks about the natural man. It talks about the spiritual man and the carnal. The natural man has never been touched by the Spirit of God. His spirit is dead. He doesn't, he, he doesn't have a yearning for the things of God, a yearning for the Spirit of God. Those who are spiritual are those who have been touched by the Spirit of God. Now your spirit has become awakened. There's something in you that's hungry for more than this, than this world has to offer. If that hasn't happened in your life, you may want to check your encounter with God. Because if you ever get a drop of this, it makes you to want more and more. I'm a junkie for the presence of God. Are you hearing me? Now, the third category is the carnal man. And the carnal person is the person that their spirit has been awakened, but they are completely controlled by the natural man. And there's a lot of people like that. Been filled with the spirit, come to church, but they don't walk in the spirit. They're not spiritual. They wouldn't even know if the Spirit of God was in the house or not unless it knocked them down. And there's people like that. You don't want to be like that. I don't want to, in fact, I, I can just tell you, I'm not like that. Are you hearing me? And we got people in this church that's not like that. They're spiritual people. They exercise reaching out to the presence of God. They exercise getting in the spirit they exercise that that spirit man that is in them make contact with the presence of god that has got to happen in your life in every one of our lives someone say amen to that now i want you to hear this when you got born again and, the, and your spirit came alive god gave your spirit the ability to talk your spirit can talk yes it can your, just like your physical man can talk, my physical man's talking right now. But when I got saved, my spirit man got where he could also speak. So you got a physical language, hear me, and you got a spirit man language. Your spirit language. If you look at the scripture, it calls it like this. The unknown tongue or other tongues are simply tongues when you hear someone praying in an unknown tongue an unknown tongue means that it didn't come from this world you can't go to Africa and find this unless they got the Holy Ghost you can't go to China and find this unless they got the Holy Ghost you can't go to Mexico and find this unless they hold this language did not originate on the earth this language orid originated in heaven it was given to us when our spirit man came alive. Your spirit man has a language. And it's called the unknown tongue. It's called other tongues or tongues. Let me give you a couple of examples before I really get into this. In Acts chapter 2, 
when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible said, and they begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, when they were speaking, it wasn't their intellectual mind that was speaking in tongues. It was their spirit man that was speaking in tongues. Your spirit man has a language that came from the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God and your spirit interwoven together. And you're pl praying in a language that you don't understand, you don't know. It doesn't come from your mind. It comes from your spirit. Look, Acts chapter 10. The Bible said that when they received the Holy Ghost, they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So th th that's the language of the Spirit. Now look at for, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 14. Let me give this to you. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. He says, for if, and I want you to go there. I wish I had it on the screen tonight. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. I'm going to wait on you because I really want you to see this. He says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, what does your Bible say there? My spirit prayeth, but my understanding is un unfruitful. You see that? 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray, help me, in an unknown tongue, what's praying? My spirit prayeth. Now look at the word spirit. It's small s. Anytime it's talking about the spirit of God, it's a big s. So when you, now here's what he just said. When you pray in an unknown tongue, your spirit is talking. Your spirit is talking when you're praying in an unknown tongue. Here's the conflict. Look at verse 14. If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Here's the conflict for everybody. It's because your mind doesn't understand what you're saying. And if you're not careful, you allow your mind to stop the spirit. Shut it down. Hinder it. Now, look up here tonight. It's not about possession. The Holy Ghost is not going to possess you tonight. If you don't want to speak in tongues and you don't want your spirit man to pray or to talk, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. This is not possession where the Spirit of God comes in and makes you do something you don't want to do. But there ought to be something in every one of our hearts that I want to get out of this physical realm into the realm of the Spirit where angels are, where the presence of God is, where there's peace, where there's joy. Listen, I don't have the money tonight to go to Hawaii. But I do have the opportunity to take a trip in the Spirit of God. And for a minute, let my troubles pass away. For a minute, let my fear, let my anxiety pass away. Why? I'm in the presence of the Lord. Give God some praise on this Sunday night. You can quench the Spirit. You can quench your spirit, man, from talking. You can do that. You can stop it. And, and there's all kinds of battles that come. And I want you to know tonight two things. Number one, the devil don't want you learning how to get in the realm of the spirit. Because he has no weapons for that. The only way the devil can fight me is in my flesh. He can't fight my spirit, man. For greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So the devil's going to fight you in your flesh. Watch. And your flesh don't want you to pray in the spirit either. Because the more you pray in your spirit, the more your spirit talks to God, the weaker the desires of the flesh get. The flesh don't want to die. The flesh don't want to lose power over you. It likes holding you in depression. It likes holding you in bondage. It likes holding you in fear. So the moment you begin to step out into the realm of the Spirit, it talks to you. People think you're silly. You're making this up. That's just you. Can I tell you, you need to put a finger in the ear, stop the sound of that voice, and obey God. Somebody say obey God. 
So look at verse 15. What is it then? Watch. I will pray with my spirit. You, listen, you as a spirit filled, now if you don't have the Holy Ghost, this don't fit for you. But you need to learn how to let your spirit talk to God. You need to learn how to move beyond your intellectual mind and allow your spirit to speak to God. I, I mean, if I, if I gave the mic tonight to those who were back there a while ago and you were praying, you were in the spirit, what did you feel at that time? I mean, it was, you could feel the glory of God. It was so thick. You could feel the presence of God. There was no fear. There was no worry. I wasn't thinking about tomorrow, what if, what might happen. I wasn't thinking about negativity. I wasn't thinking about death. I wasn't thinking about a struggle. I was caught up in the Spirit of God where there's peace. I see victory. I see revival. I see the goodness of the Lord. He said, I'll pray with my spirit. And then watch, I will pray with understanding also. He's saying, so I'm going to pray, my spirit's going to talk to God, and then I'm going to talk to God out of, my, out of my mind, out of my intellectual mind. I know what I'm saying. God, touch my marriage, touch my kids, touch the, my grandbaby. God, give us breakthrough. I know exactly what I'm saying. But I've got to move beyond that if I'm going to get into a deeper realm of prayer, and I've got to get where my spirit works. I push the carnal mind to the side and my spirit makes contact with the spirit of God and now my spirit is praying I don't know what it's saying but I, oh Lord, I can feel what it's saying watch he said I will sing with the spirit I thought I heard someone singing back there in the spirit it's just a harmony words being uttered from your spirit man well what did they say I don't know what they said they don't know what they said but can I tell you it is such a wonderful experience that I want to do it as often as I can and one of the struggles that we have in the church is that we're not penetrating through the veil of the flesh we're staying confined to the flesh so we're staying confined to irritations. We're staying confined to trouble. We're staying confined to being tired or my back's hurting or my neck's hurting or whatever. Hello, somebody. And that's why you're not experiencing the type of glory that God wants us to experience. Now, I want you to hear this. That prayer room should not be as deep as it is out here. We ought to have the same glory that we got in there as we do out here. But the problem is, the people that's back there has walked through the veil of their flesh. They're allowing their spirit man to make contact with God. And all of a sudden you can feel the Shekinah glory of the Lord. You got to learn. You gotta, that's why you got to pray. You gotta, you gotta learn. Listen, these, and, and, and these guys that are doing yoga and meditation, and they'll spend 20 minutes in meditation, silence. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to make contact with the realm of the spirit. They're trying to get out of the body, out of fear, out of trouble. They're trying to get into calmness. Can I tell you? Listen, th that's a, that's a fake. We got the real deal. But you got to make an effort to get into the presence of God. You got to. Someone say amen. He said, I will pray with the spirit or my spirit will talk. I will pray with understanding or I will pray with my mind. My mind will talk to God. I will sing with my spirit. Or I will sing with my mind. I know what I'm saying. This morning, 
I was in the glory of God in that prayer room, weeping and talking in tongues. And, and tonight I heard people crying back there in the presence of God. That's when you know you're, you're penetrating through the flesh and your spirit man is beginning to make contact with God. Tears flow. It's not tears of sadness. I don't know why I cry. But there's just some, it's a brokenness. Because God loves a broken heart. He loves a contrite heart. And there's just a brokenness that comes and tears are flowing. And I'm in the presence of God and my spirit man is praying. And This morning I heard the Lord say that he's given our spirit. Our spirit can talk. Hello. Your spirit has a language. And we got to learn how to get into that. You got to learn how to pray in your spirit. Hello, somebody. You got to learn how. And, 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 and I, I really believe this is that, is that you know, whenever, whenever we come together, that's the problem with drugs and, and alcohol and pot and volumes and pain pills. And no, I'm talking about you, Katie. And, and, and it's because it numbs your mind. And when you get numbed in your mind, you can't penetrate into the realm of the spirit. You're just drunk. You're, you're not emotional. You can't feel. You, you're not, you can't make good judgment. And this whole generation is drugged out on drugs. Come on, somebody. We're numb and can't feel God. You don't need to come to church high. You can't come drunk. You can't come popping pills. If you do, you'll never get in the presence of God. Someone say amen. Well, <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. This morning, I prayed, and I said, Lord, help me to worship you. I want to be a worshiper. Make me into a worshiper. I want to worship you. And as soon as I prayed that, oh, I was speaking in tongues. I was weeping. I was moaning and travailing by the Spirit of God. I was lost. I don't know how long I was praying. It didn't matter. It didn't matter who was back there. I was in another realm in the presence of God. As soon as it lifted, the scripture was burning in my heart. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. I want you to hear this tonight. Does God accept my hand clapping? Yes. Does He accept me lifting my hands? Yes. Does He accept me dancing? Yes. But you know what He's looking for? He's looking for somebody who gets beyond the flesh. And all of a sudden now, they're connected with their spirit, and their spirit is worshiping him. Their spirit is magnifying him. They're speaking in another language, a language that's not from the intellectual mind. The language is from the spirit. The language is from the spirit of God. If you want to be a worshiper, listen, you got to worship him. you got to worship him speaking in tongues. Because that's the language of the Spirit. My spirit, is My spirit is praying. My spirit is talking. And God's looking for somebody to worship Him. Not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Yes. Lift your hands and worship Him for a moment. Oh, glory to God. 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 You know what I hear the Holy Ghost saying right now? Is that the reason some people won't worship Him in the Spirit 
is because it deals with the issues in your heart. You can't have hatred. You can't have unforgiveness. You can't have a bunch of puke in your heart and worship Him. So when you begin to reach out with your spirit, God purifies your heart. And people don't want to get their heart purified. They don't want to look in the mirror and deal with the issues. But can I tell you, if we don't deal with them now, we're going to have to deal with them on the other side. I'd rather deal with them now. Get the glory of God in my life. Get the presence of God in my life. Come on, take 30 seconds and reach out to God. Reach out to God. Can you stand and reach out to the Lord? Stand to your feet and reach out to God. Reach out to the Lord for a moment. Reach out to the Lord for a moment. Reach out to the Lord. If, if there is something between you getting in that connection with the Spirit of God, I need you to hear this. It's not just affecting you, it's affecting the church. You can't come here and not affect us. It's affecting not only you, it's affecting us. Because you know what would happen if you got a real breakthrough and it, it, flew, it, it would flow through you? We'd all get a blessing from what's happening in your life. It's quiet in here. Don't, that's fine. That's fine. But how are we going to have a move of God if you can't have a move of God? We're just going to just jump over you and have a move of God? No, I got to clean. I got to clean. That, that's got to be clean between my spirit and the spirit of God. That's got to be clean. And you might as well say amen to this. We can have church and never make contact with that because we're doing everything with our understanding, everything in the flesh, but there's no miracles, no power, no joy, no glory. Somewhere we got to step beyond that veil. For me to step beyond that veil, I got to deal with what's in here. I can't bask over it. I can't whitewash it. I got to repent. Say, God, purchase that, cleanse me. God, I, I got to have your glory. Amen. Somebody reach your hands up and begin to magnify the Lord. Come on, begin to magnify the Lord. Come on, let's just, can, can we just keep it right here? Even though it may squirm for a moment, I'm going to keep it right here. I'm going to keep the pressure right here. Let it squirm. Go ahead, let it squirm. I'm going to keep the pressure right here. Come on, you need to reach out to God. Break through that veil. What is that? What, what is that? You need that, God. What is that between me and you? I Bring that down. Bring it down. Bring it down. My spirit's got to talk. Let my spirit man be free. Let my spirit. Spirit man, be free. Come on, somebody, reach out to God. Reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Brother Green, you remember that communion service that we had? And, and the Holy Ghost hit you, and, and I'm not trying to be gross or rude, but brother you were lost I mean you had snot coming down your face and I know that's gross but I'm just telling you if you never had snot come down your face you don't know what I'm talking about it's a complete abandonment of what's physical and you are so caught up in the glory of God that you could care less of what's going on you don't even want to wipe your nose because you don't want to stop what's happening he was lost in the glory. I've never seen out of all the, I don't think I've ever seen you act like that. That's what we have to go after every day. That type of glory in our life every day where he's praying through me, he's cleansing me, he's washing my mind. 
when, when, when the glory of God gets off you, what you're going to realize is how clean your mind is. My mind's been washed. How many of you wish you could take a washcloth and wash your mind? I got a word for you. You can't wash it physically, but with the Spirit of God, He'll wash your mind. Somebody reach out to God for a moment. Lord, I want to penetrate my flesh. I want to go into the glory of the Lord. I want to go, go into the glory of the Lord. Are you helping me right now? Are you helping me? Oh, God. Church, I'm just going to tell you, that's got to be broken. Hello, that's got to be, can I get a witness? That's got to be broken. I'm not talking about new ones that come, but I'm talking about people that's been in this thing for a while. we got to be able to pray in the Holy Ghost. we got to be able to talk in tongues and pray in the Spirit. My spirit, man, has got to pray. It's a surrenderance. Surrendering. <laughs> surrendering to the Spirit of God. Surrendering to the Spirit of God. Someone asked, Do I got to speak in tongues to go to heaven? <laughs> you got to speak in tongues to go to Walmart. <laughs> I mean, how stupid. How stupid. I'm going to take something so beautiful and put it in that kind of category. Are you kidding me? This is the river. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let the rivers of heaven flow through my spirit. Flow through us. Flow through this church. And this spake he of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I'm too old to push. And I'll be honest with you, I'm too tired to push. I ain't pushing tonight. But you, you, you need to want this. And God help us if we don't.